The miracle mindset paraliminal grew out of an experience of a dear friend and colleague in the Transformational Leadership Council, successful author and businesswoman named JJ Virgin. A tragedy beset her son, and the medical profession and neurologist said, there's no hope for him. He was in a hit and run automobile accident as a pedestrian. It was devastating. Nobody gave JJ any hope of recovery for her son. She refused to give up on him. And as a result of that, the miracles that unfolded in her life, she knew she would have to share. So she created a book to describe it. And as a colleague of ours at Learning Strategies asked, could we design a paraliminal to assist in helping people embody a miracle mindset? She knew if it could happen for her, it could happen for anyone. Now, you don't have to have a significant tragedy in order to have a miracle occur. Let's just say, Everything about life is a miracle. The fact that we breathe is a miracle that we're deeply grateful for, right? Our heartbeat is a miracle. I don't think anybody in science can really explain the miracle that human life really is. So when you establish a goal for yourself that you've not been able to achieve or is beyond the experience of anything you've ever experienced before, then you know to realize that goal, to manifest that dream is a miracle. So you can apply the miracle mindset to any goal that you have, any objective, any challenge that you face. Now, the way the paraliminal works is there is an attribute that we're looking for. One of seven attributes is what you'll focus on for the particular listening session. Then you also want to think of a role model who really embodies that particular attribute that you're interested in. And finally, you want to think about, all right, if you did achieve this goal or when you do achieve this goal, what's that about for you? Why is this important? Why is it essential that you focus on the realization of this at this time in your life? So the attributes are the interesting things. And you know, all of our paraliminal recordings come with a manual that describes the best use of that particular paraliminal session. So in it, there's a description of each of these attributes, but I wanted to read them to you. First one is being resilient. And I think if somebody can be resilient, they are open to learning, willing to engage in a creative way to figure out how to have it occur, and they persistently endeavor in the direction of that, no matter what happens. So this is the idea of being resilient. The second is living in the present. One of the things that JJ experienced was that the medical profession would have to give her the worst case scenario all the time. And so she was always having to endure painting, the painting of this awful future for a son. And she would have to wipe that out and say, no, I'm envisioning that my son is going to be normal. He's going to walk. He's going to carry on a life like he had prior to this accident. She would hold that in a vision, but then she'd come back to the present moment. What's this one next thing that I am going to do and stay very present and open to what's possible? You see, with an open mind and an open heart and an open will, we have an open connection to the source of all the miracles that come to us in our lives. And so that is the idea of living in the present. The next is being courageous. That 
requires that as you awaken today, that you boldly step into your life courageously. When I say courageous, I refer to this idea of the heart. In French, we call it cour, and courage means filled with heart. So the idea that you're living wholeheartedly in this present moment, stepping into whatever occurs, means that you have, you're all in. And I think that's what life asks us for. Life asks us to be all in today. Not, yeah, someday maybe I'll get to that goal, but I'm in. This is what I'm on for. This is what my day is devoted to. I'm living wholeheartedly, courageously into it. The next one is taking action. Now, sometimes we don't always know what the ideal next step would be, but whatever small next step is in front of you, be in a mode to take action. When something occurs, here's a possibility, here's an invitation, take action on it. Don't wait, don't hesitate, don't put it off. Courageously take action, boldly step up, wholeheartedly go for it. The next one is being abundant-minded. And I, you'll often hear me refer to the idea that the universe is abundant. And the degree to which we have access to that abundance is our prosperity consciousness. The degree to which we feel we're in the flow of that universal abundance that's available to us. And so being abundant-minded means any lack or limitation that occurs to you, see beyond that. See that you're not in a situation of lack or limitation. That if that perceived lack is there, it's going to be replaced by the abundance that's coming to you now. That's what part of the miracle is. There's a lot of ways to prove that that's the case. But if you stay in that mindset, that's going to make all the difference. Next is collaborating with supportive people. Now, there's always going to be people who say, oh, that's impossible. Oh, don't set your, your hopes for that. It, that's just a pipe dream. That's never going to happen. No, instead, what you want to do is you want to surround yourself by the people who are encouraging you that are saying, yes, I'll hold vigil with you. I'll stand next to you. I believe it. I have resources. Let me connect you with this person or that person that can give you an ideal next step that may occur on the trajectory, on the journey to the miracle that you're seeking. And so once we cross the threshold into the possible, then once we pass that threshold, we'll find supportive people helpers along the path. You've heard the idea that when the student's ready, the teacher appears. The same is true for you achieving a goal. When you're ready for the, the miracle to arrive, it will show up in all kinds of different forms, in all kinds of different guises and packages. Just never know how it's going to come. And that's the nature of a significant shift in consciousness is we're not looking for what we've seen in the past. We're looking for something we've never seen before. So when it arrives, we go, it's a miracle. Truth is, everything's a miracle. The fact that you're open, ready, receptive, and surrounded by supportive energy to have it arrive, you can say, yes, I'm in the flow of miracle. And that's what miracle mindset is, right? Having that mindset and helping you by surrounding yourself by people with that mindset. And the final one, and this is really a cool one. It's the idea of practicing forgiveness. 
One of the big ones that JJ realized is she had to forgive all of the people who were detractors. She had to forgive herself for what she said to her son that drove her son out of the house when he had that accident. She had to forgive her son for storming out and not looking. She had to forgive the driver of the car that hit and ran. You know, she had to do a lot of forgiveness work. And what forgiveness does is it takes whatever area of our life that we've scrunched down with anger and fear and hatred, whatever it might be, shame, and it gives forth love. Forgiveness is giving forth love to those areas of our lives where we've been withholding it. And when love flows, that energy that goes through us is the energy, that universal energy that brings the miracle in the same way that the miracle of life starts with that act of love that brings about life perpetuating itself. And so this idea of practicing forgiveness is good whenever a thought about shame arrives, anger, fear, or resentment, put forgiveness in. Forgiveness of yourself for holding a thought other than the highest and best outcome that's possible. In the Hawaiian uh, spiritual tradition of Huna, they have a prayer called the Ho'oponopono prayer. And that's basically what it is, is forgiving ourselves for the thoughts that we're holding that are anything other than beauty, love, and goodness, and truth for those that we're holding thoughts for. And when we say, I'm sorry, please forgive me, thank you, I love you, that prayer, that prayer goes to every thought, every recognition of you as the thinker. So obviously, those are a lot of really cool attributes. You're not going to develop all seven of them every time you listen Although I do want to say that the design, the scripting of this has all seven woven into it. You're focusing on one attribute that you're choosing to create for today. Think of a person who is a great role model of that. Anybody in your life you know that has those qualities, that does that one thing really well? Imagine them, we're going to use them as a model to borrow their strategies to help us get where we want to go. And once again, think of why you're doing it. What is the ideal end result? How do I phrase it? Um, the purpose, the purpose for having that selected attribute. What's in it for you? What's in it for all concerned? And when you have all of that, you're ready for the listening session. Do enjoy the Miracle Mindset Paraliminal. It's one of the real treasures of the library of paraliminals. And I don't know, you remember getting albums in the olden days where you'll see, you know, there's 15 songs on it. And this is one of those tracks within the library that you might not pull out very often. But I'm telling you, you can use this today to make significant progress on any goal that's important to you. Enjoy receiving miracles today. It's a pleasure to be with you. We'll see you again tomorrow. Bye for now.